In today's video, we're going to break down how to maximize your puck control. And this video is set up ultimately if you're a player, if you're a parent, or even a coach, I'm going to break down the things that we should be looking for and how to ultimately set up a stick so that our players are set up for success. I'm also going to break down a lot of the common mistakes that I see players making, and I'm going to even review a handful of products that I see very commonly used in a rink and should we or should we not be using and when does it make sense to use them. This is X7 Hockey Talk. My name is John Swanson. You'll see my players and alumni in the USHL playing college division one and division three hockey, HL, NHL, and even the Olympics. Now, before we jump into how to set up a stick, and I'm going to break down how to set up the handle, how to set up the blade, I want to talk about some of the mistakes that we're commonly seeing. Now, if you walk into a rink and I were to sit down with one of my might players, squirts, peewees, and I ask him a question, why do you tape your stick that way? The common answer I'm going to get is because so-and-so in the NHL does it that way. And the first thing we have to realize here is that's incredible. It's incredible that our players are being inspired by NHL players. The second thing we have to understand, though, is that NHL players' skill level and the hours of practice they have put in has put them on essentially another planet to our youth players. Simply put, our youth players don't have the same skill sets as them. And so the things that NHL players can get away with, youth players cannot. And so often you'll see NHL players starting to move towards less tape on their blade. And the reason why they can get away with this is because they have better puck control skills. They put in more hours, more reps. And the less tape we have there, the less friction we have. And when water hits that blade, it becomes slipper. NHL players can manage that, youth players cannot. And so I see a lot of youth players maybe just taping their toe or doing some kind of funky tape job. And they might be trying to emulate Connor Bedard. They might be trying to emulate Jamie Benn. Maybe it's Nathan McKinnick or whoever their favorite player is at the time. And what you'll see is that their tape job from one week to another radically changes. They're always taping their stick differently. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to tape our blade consistently and we want to set the blade up for maximum control because again, these are youth players, not NHLers. The second thing I see is often we buy these products, right? A, a lizard grip, um, we might buy some wax, two different brands, and I'll be breaking these down of why to use them and when they make sense. But ultimately, we take these really expensive sticks. And so I just have two right here that I'm gonna use for demonstration. I have a true stick and I have a Bauer stick, and these sticks are light, right? We pay all this money um, to these companies to buy these cutting edge uh, technological sticks. And I'm a big fan of a youth player having a good stick. I think it's important to have the right flex. And I have a whole different video on how to pick out the right stick for your player. But we do invest into these and they're an investment because they're not cheap. And then we make a common mistake. We just make them heavy. We spend all this money to buy a light stick and we put this crazy knob on it or we wax the blade until there's a pound of wax on there and it bogs the stick down. So that's the second major mistake that I see that our players are making right now is that they're just over taping their sticks, over waxing their sticks, and they're ultimately making these really light sticks less light and a lot heavier. And so we wanna avoid that. All right, so let's break down essentially how to set up a stick. And so I have two kind of props here. I have my Bauer, um, and then I have this, uh, this Project X from True. I've actually never used it. It's brand new, just got it today, just cut it down uh, for one of my kids. And so the first thing we want to consider is the handle. Now, as a parent, I remember when my dad taped my stick for the first time, he took the roll of tape and he essentially put about half of it right here. And his thought process was, well, if little Johnny drops a stick, he can pick it up then, right? And it makes sense when they're super young, they need that stick to kind of get off the ground a little bit. But the truth is gloves have also improved tremendously in our ability to grip and hold things. And so that's a bit unnecessary. Now, the second thing is, I even think the width of tape is unnecessary. I think it's too wide. So if you consider hands, right, youth hands, the pinky is gonna sit at the very top, right? This is where they're gonna hold it. And that spot right there, the pinky essentially overla uh, overlaps the knob. And so what I like to do is I like to kind of match that width to the same width of their hand. And so what I will often do, and if you look at how these are set up, is I will take a roll of tape, right here so i have a howie's roll of tape white cloth and i'll split it right down the middle and i'll work from here so this is my tape that i'll work on and i'll simply just make a little knob and so this one we were on the road 
and one of my players broke the stick. So I had to basically make up a knob real quick. And I basically tape the handle first and then I tape the knob and it probably comes off about a quarter of an inch, just enough to give um, a little bit of friction there in a knob to keep the hand on the stick, but not so much that it starts to weight the stick down. The second part of this is the overlap is that I'm overlapping maybe a quarter inch, and I think you guys can see this, but it's about a quarter inch overlap. Again, I don't wanna overlap it too much because then the knob gets thick, the shaft gets too thick, and I'm weighting the stick down. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna set the handle up to keep it light, give it enough knob so the player can hold it, right? And the second thing is we have to ultimately choose, are we gonna go cloth tape, or do we wanna use a product like a Lizard Grip that is awesome? And honestly, it's a preference. I go with cloth tape personally, but I'm old school. And this is what I use my entire life. My kids love their uh, lizard skins, uh, basically grip tape. And so here's two setups. This was cloth. We were on the road. I had to make up a new stick. So this is what they got. And then this would be a setup for one of my players right now. So what I do is I put that one, uh, basically that tape, the cloth tape split in half. I build my quarter inch knob. And then I will start the lizard grip at the top and I work down and I'm barely overlapping it, right? If you look at this product, it's not meant to overlap. You just wanna get the grip on there. That's the second like, biggest thing I see with kids is they either have way too big of knobs or they take this product and they, they say, well, this is 99 centimeters. And they try to use all of it, okay? And they overlap it, so they make it too thick and then they bring it all the way down the handle. When I tape a stick, I look at where that hand is gonna be in the glove and then I leave about two inches of excess just if they have to slide down. But for the most part, I don't run the knob or the handle all that far down the stick because their top hand is gonna stay up here at pretty much all times. They don't need tape way down the shaft because they don't hold their stick there, okay? And so just because this roll is 99 centimeters, we don't need to use all of it. And so often I use this much as what I need, I rip it and then I discard the rest. And it feels a little bit like a waste, but just because we bought something doesn't mean we have to use all of it and I don't wanna weight the stick down. So that's how I set up the handles. Again, this is our personal preference. What I find works best for my players is about a quarter inch knob at the top. And then if we're using the lizard skin, we have just a about a one eighth inch overlap and I take it down about two inches two to three inches past the glove. And the way to test that is just have them hold it after it's been cut and then put the glove on and then you just wanna have a little bit of excess there so they do have some room to slide the stick. And so there you have it, here's a cloth setup and then here's one where we're using that grip uh, structure. And so underneath that, there's nothing, there's no cloth tape. I just made the knob with a little bit of cloth like I just showed you and then I put the, the grip tape over it. Okay, so that is how to set up essentially the knob, right? And this keeps the stick very light. Now we're gonna go into ultimately how to set up the blade. Now, the big thing we have to understand is that when we look at a blade, we're gonna pass off the heel, right? And we're gonna do a lot of our stick handling dribbles off the heel. We're gonna use the toe for shooting and a lot of times the toe is gonna be also used for our pulling and our um, essentially reaches, right? So we're gonna have toe pressure to control that puck. And so with a youth player, I like to see tape from the toe to essentially the heel because they're gonna use all of this. Now what you'll often see is a lot of players like uh, Marcus Johansson who plays for Minnesota Wild, he'll actually tape right here with white tape and then he actually uses a thin black line of tape here. Now he can get away with that. I see youth players do that and I'm like, mm, I don't think that's the best idea. We wanna run the tape from the toe right now to the heel. Now the next big consideration is tape color. Right, and I've heard some coaches say, you can only use black tape. You can only use white tape. I kind of disagree with that. I think a lot of times when you look at a hockey stick, they're unique, right? This is an opportunity, and hockey's kind of a boring sport for individuality, right? Players don't really get to be different, and this, this is kind of the one way they get to be a little bit different, right? And they get to kind of have some personality. And so I think if a player wants to use white, let them use white. If they want to use black, great, let them use black. Now, the consideration that a youth player should probably use white is this simple reason. It's cheating. If a white tape is on the blade, their peripheral vision when they're dribbling the puck is easier to pick up that black object because everything down on the ice is white, including the blade. And so when they see that black object out of the corner of their eye, they know where the puck is. And so the same 
case could be made for black tape. Well, John, when you have black tape on a blade, it hides it from a goalie and the goalie can't tell if the puck's on the, the toe, it can't tell if it's on the, the heel. And so there's all these like, I mean, this is an old age uh, conversation and people go back and forth, a black tape versus white. I do think from a stick handling side, it is easier for a younger player to use white just because they'll pick up that dark object. Now, again, as the player gets older, I have some players that I coach, they use black, some use white, it's preference. I personally use white and so therefore my kids luck out and that's what they're gonna get on their stick until they can tape their own sticks and pick their own uh, tape, they're getting white. So the next thing we have to consider now is do we start at the toe or do we start at the heel? And it's basically the same case in point for black tape versus white, right? So if you start at the toe and you roll it down, people talk about how it creates friction when you stick handle, right? And when you uh, tape it from the heel, it creates friction when you go to shoot, right? And, and so on forth. And there's always a case for one way or the other way to do it. Now, I think this is more preference and how you like to tape your stick. So if you go heel to toe, great. If you go toe to heel, great. I don't think it matters. Personally, I'm a toe to heel person. I find it easier to tape my blade that way. And that's just how I prefer it. So does it matter if we go heel to toe or toe to heel? I think ultimately it's your call, just like black or white tape. Now, here's how I set up my stick to ultimately tape it. What I do is I first start off with four single pieces of tape that are pre-cut. So I'm gonna tape a stick with you guys real quick. So the first thing I do is I put my stick essentially between my left leg and my right leg, and I'm just gonna put a piece of tape right here, and I have it about half on the blade, okay? And then I'm gonna add my second one, and I use my thumb to press it down, and I'm using about a 1 8 inch overlap. So this is what the front's gonna look like, okay? And then the back side, we're gonna repeat the same process. So we're gonna place the first piece of tape, second piece of tape, and then from here, I'm gonna press down with my thumb, get any creases out, and then I grab the ends, and I essentially create this toe cap effect. Right? And the reason why I do this is that you can just essentially rip the tape and then kind of place it, or there's kind of other ways to put tape on the toe, but I always find that this is the cleanest way to do it. So from there, I grab a scissors and I just trim the ends. And now I have this real clean toe to start with. And so that's how I set up my stick. This is how I used my stick when I was in basically pro college. And this is how I tape our kid stick. So I set up the toe and now I take my white tape and I have to get this excess off. And so, by the way, for parents, if you ever wanna learn how to rip tape, if you put the tape in your dominant hand, I put my essentially finger underneath it and I put my thumb right on there. And then from there, I grab it in my palm and rip and I can pretty much get a straight line. And I know there's a little bit of art to ripping uh, tape. Um, it's actually something I had to teach my wife, Jessica, how to rip tape. But again, for those parents that are trying to learn, you don't always wanna rely on a scissors. It's right here is my setup and then I bring it over and I basically pinch it with this finger and my palm and I rip and twist. And you can get a really straight rip. Now from here, I start on the back side of the toe and again, getting your tape started is the most important part. So I got about a one eighth inch overlap, but the thing now is I've actually angled the tape just slightly at the top from the toe to the, from the bottom to the top is at a slight angle towards the heel because I need to work the tape down this way. Okay. So from here I have my non-taping hand is holding the blade and kind of working it back and forth. And then I pull it across and I get it right where I want. And then opposite hand thumb is going to press down, get any bubbles out. Same thing, bubbles out. And so you can see, I'm using about a 1 8 inch overlap to maybe a quarter, working down the blade. Now the second thing is, I'm pressing the tape against the blade and I'm using this pointer finger essentially to control and pressing it down. So you can see right here, I use this finger to press the tape down, get it right where I want. And now how far to take it? 
I like to take it all the way to the heel, especially for my youth players. Now, if I'm taping my own stick, I would probably stop here. But if it's for a youth player or say my kids, I'll continue all the way to that heel. And then I bring it back so it's got a nice clean line, grab it and rip. And so what you'll see is Connor uh, Bedard right now, he'll actually tape all the way up here, okay? And I, I don't understand, and I've, I've never talked to him, so I don't really understand why he takes the tape up that far. But to me, this is kind of the maximum point that we're gonna take and use for our dribbling. So that's where I stop my tape. I don't handle the puck off the shaft. Um, so it doesn't necessarily make sense to me. Now, he might have a specific reason to do it, but to me, it's just added weight, so that's where I stop. So from here, once it's done, I'm just gonna press the tape down and we're essentially done if you wanna be. Now, what some players will do is they'll take like a hockey puck. Um, I think Matt Hartman on the Minnesota Wild uses a hockey puck. I think actually Connor does the same. Um, for me, I prefer a little bit of wax. Um, and I like the wax on the bottom because it kind of keeps your tape uh, down. And on top of it, it also makes it uh, slide smoother. The second thing before we jump into the waxing, I do want to cover how often should we tape our blade, right? So for me, kind of the rule is before a game, new tape job. Um, when I played professionally, I would tape my stick between every period, right? We always want fresh, clean tape because it's going to give us that control we want. Now for my youth player, I don't want to essentially be taping their stick all day long. So it's probably every two to three skates. I'll look at the condition of the tape, but before a game, they're definitely getting a fresh tape job. So if we're at a tournament, I'm taping the stick before every game. Now for my might player, um, it's about every two to three skates for practices that he will get a new tape job. So that's kind of the, um, you know, the cadence of which we retape the blade. Now, if you're a center, bad news, you're going to be taping your stick a lot more often because draws, taking draws are very hard on tape jobs and sticks in general. So um, you're going to have to watch essentially if your blade, you know, tape starts to rip or peel up, I'm basically ripping it off next chance I get to give it a new fresh tape job because I want it looking clean. Now, we have a couple products. So we have Sex Wax, which is what I used all my childhood and even when I played professionally. And then we have this U Wax, which is a super tack hockey wax. Um, so another product, right? And then you have kind of your candle wax. Now, if you look at levels of like stickiness, I would rate candle wax essentially one out of five from a sticky with. It's really not gonna make the blade sticky. If anything, what it does is it helps repel the water from the tape and the snow from building up, right? And you'll see a lot of times, you'll see players kind of scraping that snow off on the bench and wax will help keep that off, but it will not add any stickiness. Now, if you want the most sticky, this is like, crazy like you get it on your fingers and it's like it feels like glue so this is like a five out of five when it comes to stickiness and i would say that this right here this product sex wax is maybe a two or three out of five sticky and this is kind of my personal preference um i do know the kids somewhat like this um but often if i'm doing their their blades and waxing it it's right here now how do we wax a blade because we talked about earlier there's a common mistake of putting too much wax on and we can make the blade really heavy and so the most important areas for me to wax are gonna be the bottom, right? So that the blade slides. So I'm gonna go here and I just press down and I'll get some wax on the blade. And then from here, once I have it, I'll just take my finger and I just kind of work it into the tape. Okay, and so that's it. The blade's done. I'll put just a little bit on the toe to kind of help that seam stay. And then from here, I'm gonna put a little light wax on the forehand. So I'm gonna pull it with the tape because I don't want the tape to come up. Okay, I did not put a lot on and then I kind of work it in. And then I'm gonna do the same on the back side, a little bit on the toe to give that control. And then I'll wax a little bit of the blade. And then again, I just work it in. And so now, this stick went from being essentially brand new. I cut it down this morning. I put the, the grip on with the one quarter inch knob, took it down about two inches past their glove. I taped the toe of the blade, we trimmed it, and then we worked the tape to about the heel. And so this is a setup that I would recommend for a youth player. Now I know there's preferences and you know everybody in the comments can have their own opinion of how to do this. What I'm sharing with you is what I find works best 
for my youth players. Now, if you want to do something slightly different, completely be my guest. If you want to use cloth tape for your knob and you don't like uh, like a, a grippier tape like this, be my guest. Now, the one thing I didn't talk about today is the shaft. A lot of times you'll see people add tape to the shaft there. I mean, there's really only three spots. You have the blade, the knob, and then the shaft. You'll see people, um, you know, almost kind of do the barbell pull where they pull the tape all the way down. Um, you'll see people, we used to call it a, a beater, which is basically a knob with tape upside down, and they'll actually roll the tape on there to put stickiness. This was long before, you know, sticks started to come out with some type of grip. And the one thing I would caution on adding anything to your, your stick shaft is that the top or the bottom hand needs to slide during the, the dribbling process in the, the pulls and the reaches. And so if you make this part too sticky, they can't slide their hand, which is going to affect puck control and their ability to ultimately dribble the puck. So we want the shaft to be just sticky enough that they have good grip when they go to shoot. But other than that, we want to keep this pretty frictionless so that the dribbling and their reaches and their pulls, their hand is able to move. And so for me, I don't put any tape on my kid's stick. This has got enough uh, tack to it already. Um, same with the Bauer. And I would say from a stickiness level, these sticks are fairly comparable. I think this is actually True's new uh, project deck. I think this stick just came out. I, I could be mistaken. This is the first time us using this stick. And then the Hyperlite is a newer stick as well. And they're about the same uh, stick grip. And then now we have very similar tape jobs. These sticks are pretty much the same size. And I would actually say from a weight, uh, they're both the same. And if anything, maybe the Project Deck feels a little bit lighter. Um, but I mean, I don't think you would be able to tell. But both exceptionally light sticks. Um, and the reason why we're changing sticks right now, you could say, well, John, why are you going from the Hyperlite to a uh, Project X? And the reason being is that I'm having to cut this stick down about two inches right now for my one of my players, which is causing the flex to go from a 20 to a 26. And I break this down in a different video. And so for that athlete, I'd like to keep them at a 20 flex. And so this is a 15 flex stick and I had to cut an inch off, which bumps them to an 18 flex point. They're both low kick points. And so for that player, I wanted to keep them at a flex point of 20. So I essentially found true that makes a 15 flex, which I think is great for our might players that are a little bit bigger and have kind of grown out of the 10, but they're not, they don't have the height to deal with the 20 flex, especially because this stick comes much longer and you start cutting three, four inches off of it. And all of a sudden you can have a 30 to a 30, you know, 36 flex stick. And that's just way too stiff for the majority of our youth players. So I think this stick is an incredible stick and my kids love it it's just i wasn't happy with how much i was having to cut it down i would have loved to see this 20 flex actually come you know two to three inches shorter um, maybe more closer to a uh, in between a 10 and a 20 uh, length so that way we could keep the 20 flex but that's not the case so we're going to give this out and uh, maybe i'll do a review on it if you want but i'd like to know was this video helpful what was your biggest takeaway and as always if you could please like and subscribe, drop a comment. I do my best to respond to everybody. And if you haven't already, check out x7hockey.com. Um, there's a spot on there that says join X7. And I'm gonna be using that in the future for my newsletter where I'm gonna be writing about all things hockey related. And my goal is ultimately to create content for youth players, for the families and coaches to help create a better environment for our players to ultimately exceed. So if you can check out x7hockey.com click join X7. When you fill that out, you'll get on my email list. And then once a week, I'm going to be shooting emails out and it might be just, Hey, we dropped a new YouTube video. Check it out. But that's it for now. This is how to set up your stick for puck control. Hope you enjoyed it until next time. This is X7 hockey talk with John Swan.